All right, everybody. Welcome to the Feature Feature. My name is Hunter Willis. We are doing, of course, the monthly roll-ups of what's new with Aptio and our product suites. So looking forward to delivering uh, the, the news today about what's been going on. And we have this month, we've got a great deep dive conversation with Amod, who is the product manager for the Cloudability product suite. So he's got some uh, some great details on the AWS savings plan recommendations. Got about a 10-minute conversation with him after the updates. So without further ado, let's dive right into it. Again, we do have some updates for FDO1, some updates for Cloudability. Uh, we did actually have an update as well for Target Process that got thrown in there. And we're doing that deep dive with a mode for AWS Savings Plan recommendations. That's going to be a great conversation. Look forward to telling you more about it. He's got some great details about how that works, what it's doing, and especially the value that it's going to be bringing to our customers. So, Without further ado, let's dive into the features themselves. For Aptio One, uh, we have a data link connector migration for some of the legacy um, data link connectors that we have. Those have been added to uh, the most recent version for data link. Those are the generic database connector, the MS SQL Server connector for Microsoft, for those of you using SQL Server, and the Windows File Share connector, so you can connect um, to your Windows file servers, file shares, file systems, whatever you like to call them. Um, additional info uh, for these features exists in the TBM community post for it, and then you can always look in the user guide uh, for that information as well for like further you know specific details on those. Um, on the horizon, we have additional IT planning and cost transparency integrations on the way. And then there's a cancel connection for data link as well. So um, that's going to be coming down the pipe. Um, there's also, you know, the update that happened with IT planning's change history filter search bar functionality. So you can, um, you know, change the history and filter there in the search bar. And um, tech service demand forecast with uh, 1.8 as well has been added. So check those out if you haven't already seen them in the application and make sure that you're uh, getting the most um, that you can out of those updates. Check the documentation. We're going to show you how to do that at the end of the call. For cloudability, um, AWS savings plan recommendations. Not going to talk about that too much here on this slide because we're getting ready to have that deep dive with a mode on that. But basically, we're making recommendations for AWS savings plans, right, which help you get the most out of the cloud spend um, by pooling your costs for different resources in AWS. And we do have a blog on our blog post about that that dives into detail as well. So check that out if you want to learn more about how that works and what it does or just listen to our call here in just a few minutes. Um, we also are surfacing migration costs and cloudability shift. So again, cloudability shift is our migration financial planning solution that's part of the cloudability suite. And along with uh, basically doing financial forecasts for moving from your on-premises infrastructure to the cloud, uh, we also allow you to include like one-time costs and costs that go for specific durations during the migration. Things like labor, services, right? Any additional fees or costs or maybe applications that you're using for a short period of time during the migration. And before that was rolled up in like the total of what's going on with the solution and the, um, excuse me, the total cost for your migration, but now it's actually surfaced in the charts as well. So you can really get a very clear picture of those bubble costs in the reporting and in the different charts that you can make in cloudability shifts. So check that out. Um, and there's more information about that in our documentation as well. Um, we have also to announce that we've got a lot more products for cloudability in the AWS Marketplace. So check out our listing in the AWS Marketplace um, for Aptio, Aptio Cloudability, and um, see what's available there. You can purchase our solutions right, right from there and um, see demos and things like that, the documentation on the value that they bring. And then also on the horizon, um, the SaaS spin management experience is gonna be updated in Cloudability SaaS. They're bringing more features on um, the spin management in Cloudability SaaS. So be looking out for that. We'll probably touch on that next month um, when uh, we do the next feature feature. So the last thing to touch on is target process. Again, target process is helping you uh, coordinate your financial planning along with your agile portfolio management, right? So your day-to-day -day agile dev works. Um, target process is bringing in portfolio financial management on top of that. So you can both have like a wider view to kind of coordinate everything that's going on with your agile planning, but also bring in financial management on top of that. And then there have been... Um, some updates to the integrations that we have from target process to other applications. So we used to have the ability to just do webhooks um, to other solutions via their APIs, etc. Um, but now, as you know, the, there's been automation rules in target process for some time. But basically, we've depreciated that webhook capability. So 
basically uh, for all the integrations to other third-party solutions like Slack, or CI, CD, etc., um, you can use those automation rules. The web hooks are being depreciated, which is relevant for the customers that were using those, and we've tried to reach out to them, make them aware of that as well. Um, there's also um, a few blog posts that we have about Agile that are relevant to target process and how it helps bring value to your organization. So check those out on our blog. Now, without further ado, excited to dive into this conversation that we have with Amode on AWS Savings Plan recommendations that we brought to CloudAbility, what they are, the value that they bring, and how they work. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to that conversation now. Okay, great. So we do have a mode with us here today, and he's going to be talking with us about the AWS Savings Plan recommendations in CloudAbility. But first, a mode, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do here at Aptio. Thanks again for joining us today, by the way. Hey, thanks a lot, Hunter. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Uh, I'm excited to be here and to talk about uh, both uh, AWS uh, Savings Plan as well as um, uh, CloudAbility. Uh, in the way of introduction, my name is Amod Vise. Uh, I run product management at Aptio for CloudAbility. Uh, I've been with uh, Aptio for about five months now, and I'm really glad to be running uh, CloudAbility uh, product line. Uh, as you all know, CloudAbility is a FinOps certified um, a product. Um, uh, my team and I, we are focused on bringing the right uh, product capabilities uh, to the market, uh, especially for our FinOps uh, team so that they can manage and optimize optimize their cloud spend. Uh, prior to Aptio, uh, I was with IBM and I spent considerable amount of time at IBM running their IBM Cloud platform. Cool. All right. Great. Well, again, thank you so much for your uh, for your time today and, and for doing this with us. So talk to us about uh, the AWS savings plans and the recommendations we're making for that, right? Because savings plans are really important in AWS. It's kind of like reserved instances, but more of like a pool money to a pool of money to help you save like over time, right? And spending with AWS. So so talk about that and what this feature is doing from uh, from cloudability here. All right, sounds good. Cool. So yeah, I mean, savings plan is, I think, an amazing offering from AWS. I mean, one of the advantage of savings plan is that if you have a compute saving plan, you can use it across any of your compute instances, right? So you're not restricted to using it just for EC2 or, you know, a particular type of a compute. You can use it across various regions. So I think that uh, it, it gives you that level of flexibility. Right. Uh, the one that we do with uh, the thing that we do with um, AWS Savings Plan is that we actually pull in all the historical usage information uh, from the um, AWS accounts. And what we do is take that in entire information, we run it through CloudAbilities optimization and recommendation engine. And after running it through it, we generate our own AWS recommend AWS savings plans recommendations for our customers, right? So think about it as us who have had experience of running through trillions of hours of data and all, are providing recommendations uh, to our customers. Uh, it's a completely non-biased uh, recommendations. Um, it's just based on what your you, what your usage looks like. And then we kind of uh, provide you a point of view on that, right? So that's that's basically what we do. Now, if you were to go into CloudAbility and you look at the savings plan, under savings plan, you will find a recommendation tab. And that recommendation tab will kind of show you um, what are the recommendations from our end, right? So here are the set of recommendations that you have. It will also show you what is the total upfront fees that you may have to pay for it. It will show you also the net savings that you will get out of it, right? Once you buy this, uh, these uh, savings plans, you know, it, it will show this, the, the, the savings around it and also kind of give you an estimated uh, savings rate. Now, we provide recommendations for both uh, um, EC2 as well as for compute. Uh, so you get to select as to what kind of savings plans you want to see. You want to, uh, it also, we also allow you to kind of select as to what's the term of length that you want to see, whether you want a one year savings plan, whether you want to see a three year savings plan. Right, so those kind of options are available. And then the best part about it is that you can select 
the sample date range for which you want to pull in the usage data. So you can say that, hey, you know, uh, the 1st of November to the 15th of November is what I want, or, oh, I want to pull it for just a Thanksgiving and based on uh, Thanksgiving timeframe, and based on that, I want to do my recommendation. So you can select whatever time frame you want to. Once you've done that and you run it, uh, we will show you all the recommendations. And then within the recommendations, you can actually see the different sets of instances that have been impacted. You can see the past comparison for the time frame to see as to how much savings you could have made out of it. Uh, it will show you as to what your on-demand cost looks like, what does your savings plan cost looks like, and what are the actual savings that you're going to get out of it. Uh, you can also see the future savings, right? So you hmm. can actually see as to how that compares to what your current on-demand cost looks like and also gives you a point of view in terms of uh, the break, break even point right uh, in terms of hitting uh, your savings so that's those are the fantastic things that you can get out of it and once you've seen these uh, details and you can make your decision as to which um, savings plan you want to go purchase to aws now that's a lot of information being incorporated into that right it's looking at all these past analytics and then like looking at your trends and what you could be doing in the future and it includes you know your your variables and things like that in there so that's that's absolutely incredible to hear about so i'm really excited about this i've seen it in action it works great um can you talk a little bit more about like the future value for customers right that's it's not just about like time savings right but it's also about like the, the saving itself from pulling in all of those features right yep exactly i mean the first and foremost uh thing that I kind of see as a value is that this isn't the third party kind of providing your point of view Right, so that's I think a, a great thing. We're looking at uh, various sets of data points to kind of provide you with that recommendations. Right, so that's that's actually a great thing. Uh, the way I kind of look at it is also is that AWS Savings Plan kind of enables organizations to reduce their hourly uh, cloud cost. Uh, uh, versus, you know, committing on an ongoing basis, right? Uh, Cloudability generates these recommendations for you, which I actually is a really great benefit. And with these release, I kind of see that customers have three big benefits, right? Uh, the first one is the way I kind of look at it is maximize uh, their current position. Right. So cloudability mm -hmm. takes into consideration uh, their existing commitments, identifies the cases where existing convertible RIs can be exchanged to get better utilization. So that's like the first one. Uh, the second thing is really um, comparing uh, different savings plans, right? So cloudability recommendation supports both, you know, uh, the compute as well as EC2 savings plans, which are the major types of savings plans that AWS has. Then choosing between the two options is really an important decision for the FinOps um, a team. And cloudability can make that process a lot more easier by clarifying the categories of the usage that can be covered and contrasting the savings that you get on the offerings. So that to me is like the second one in terms of value. And the third thing is really first understand the impact before you can act on it. So Cloudability uh, through its um, analytical dashboard it provides you a powerful set of insights uh, and it provides you visualization to kind of contrast the current commitments that you have, current commitment positions that you have, as well as the recommended purchases against the relevant usage for from the selected time frame. Remember the time frame I said, you can select whatever you want. So yep. you can kind of look at that, right? So you can actually understand the impact before you kind of go make your decisions. And then, like I said, you know, you can also get to see as to what your big human point uh, looks like, what your future uh, looks like. So that's um, that to me is like the third value. So yeah, I mean, overall, I think that's a very good thing for our uh, customers. All right, great. Well, Amod, thanks so much for your time today. Really excited to be able to hear about all this. Uh, is there anything else that you wanted to add it before we, uh, we switch back over to the to the regular stream here? Oh, well, I mean, one thing that I would say is that go check out, if you're an AWS customer, go check out uh, the um, AWS savings plans, uh, use it, and uh, if you have any recommendations, suggestions for us, want to see more features on that, uh, do let us know, reach out to us uh, through uh, cloudability.com. Thanks. All right, thank you, and thanks again for your time today.
As always, a pleasure speaking with Amod. Really appreciate him doing that segment with us, and hopefully we'll have him back on again to talk about new uh, solution features with the CloudAbility suite here before too much longer as well. So, um, you know, to conclude, we, we do like to remind our customers they can go to the Help Center, navigate to... Uh, the what's new section for any of the products listed in the help center to find out more about the uh, the updates for any specific product as well as log into the Aptio community um, and check out the information there too that's available to all of our current customers so thanks again for watching again my name is Hunter Willis uh, tune in again next month we'll have another episode for you a roll up of the solution updates for everything going on with Aptio we appreciate your time today everybody have a great week weekend uh, happy new year happy holidays